Tonight on Q2, a hole in the road. It's our hope that we'd still get that uh, constructed yet this year. Three months after floods hit, some major damage is still not fixed. We look into the holdup. Plus, I'm Alina Howder. The city of Laurel has seen several incidents of vandalism at its parks. We'll tell you more coming up. And socked in, smoke takes over the Magic City. I think right now we're the level we're at, very unhealthy. Yes, I would recommend all groups be included in those recommendations. Today's air quality in Billings, well, the worst in the nation. And that can quickly spell trouble for your health. The MTN News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Well, good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Riesinger. Frustrations are rising for businesses along Gable Road tonight as a sinkhole that is now more than three months old still has not been fixed. The road was washed away by extreme rainfall in early June, but many expected it to be a quick fix. However, that's been far from the case. And now there's questions over what's causing the delays. Charlie Kleps has more. In early June, Gable Road was washed out due to severe flooding and left like this. At that time, the city said that it was high up on the priority list. But now, three months later, here it sits and not much progress has been made. I mean, I expected it, yeah, to get done pretty quick. The lack of progress made on this sinkhole comes as a bit of a surprise to Garth Webster. I feel like Gable's a pretty busy road. A lot of traffic comes through here, so I definitely thought it would be something that would have been already taken care of by now. The Shipton's Big R store manager says that while their business hasn't been affected too badly, the loss of a driving lane is a nuisance. I'd say I'm a little annoyed just not seeing any progress at all. Obviously, it's not the ideal situation, but we've got it kind of shored up. Um, just we're trying to get it cleaned up and off the list at this point. City engineer Mac Vogelsong hopes the $650,000 project can be completed by the end of November. Hopefully, we're going to try to hit the, the end of the year paving window. Um, we, we have the contractor ready to go, so we're just waiting on the, on the pipe. That pipe is being manufactured as we speak. Vogelsong says the new pipe will be a square shape, which should be sturdier than the round one that was under the road when it collapsed. But that comes with additional repairs. We've got to make sure that all the other utilities fit. It's just better if we have it opened up uh, through the winter. I'd like them to see it get done, just so then that way, yeah, we can go back to completely normal operations. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. Earlier today, the focus was all on the smoke. It was so bad that it was actually some of the worst in the world here in Billings. Take a look at some of these pictures from this afternoon. Nothing but smoke throughout Billings and the rest of eastern Montana, including Miles City. That even stretched into Wyoming, as this was the scene in Sheridan. And how bad was it exactly? Well, take a look at these numbers as the Magic City's Air Quality Index sat at 206 at one point today, which is very unhealthy. For comparison, New York was at a 73, Los Angeles 59, and Denver actually had some of the best air quality in the country with a 20 this afternoon. Well, with some of the worst air in the world, you can only guess the implications it could have on your health. With more on that and a peek into the historical context, Here's Jackie Coffin. A thick coat of wildfire smoke is blanketing Billings as far as the eye can see. You may remember I was up here at the rims in May to tell you the same thing. Wildfire smoke from Canada's terrible fire season is blowing down to us. But Tuesday is the worst day people can remember seeing in a while. The important thing is to monitor your health. If you have aggravation of your heart or lungs, I would seek out medical care. With an air quality index over 200, Riverstone Health says every person should take precautions. If you're in the home, you can also close your windows, close your doors. Also cutting back on outdoor activities or even eliminating them. But if it's this bad here, imagine what it's like closer to the source. They've had uh, an extraordinary record-breaking season in Canada. Al Nash, a public information officer with the Bureau of Land Management based in Billings, is helping out command at another large wildfire southeast of Portland, Oregon. And I think the biggest change that I've seen over the course of my career is that the season is longer than it used to be. As fire season stretches to a year-round event, it's more than just people suffering from smoke. They hunker down. They really do get lower to the ground. 
at Zoo Montana, residents like Emilio and Tocada, the two bald eagles, are seeking shelter from the smoke. If you're sitting in the zoo and you listen, you don't hear many birds chirping right now just because everything is hiding away. Zoo Montana is making a rare move of allowing the animals to go to the indoor enclosures to avoid the smoke. It's a precaution that we're going to take no matter what. Um, obviously, animal health is our number one priority here. And for visitors Tuesday, smoke changed the experience. When we got out of the car, we definitely could smell it. I'm seeing that a lot of the animals are not out. While the smoke and its impact on people and animals will soon move out, the impacts of changing fire activity on the west seem here to stay. We always in the Northern Rockies talked about a season-ending event, and often that was not long after the Labor Day holiday weekend, and that's just not the case anymore. In Billings, Jackie Coffin, MTN News. All I have to do is just look at the Stockman Bank weather cam tonight. My eyes burn. My throat turns a little scratchy just with all the smoke and haze that's out there. 73 was the warmest reading today. 50 for the overnight low. Both of them a little bit cooler than average. We did pick up one one hundredth of an inch overnight last night and temperatures statewide today. Temperatures were held back thanks to that smoke and fog or this, the fog that was developing to the west of Billings early in the morning. So we had 60s, 70s all across the state for the afternoon highs today. That smoke will still have some impacts. It's starting to ease up a little bit now once we get west of Billings. It really hasn't been a problem in western Montana, but still unhealthy air quality across the plains. More weather coming up. All of the smoke also forced the school districts across the area to change their plans. Outdoor recesses were canceled in Billings today, and all athletic practices had to be moved indoors. The soccer matches between Skyview and Senior were also postponed, with Lockwood forced to cancel their games as well. Vandalism is an issue many cities deal with, and now it's hit Laurel, with two city parks having been vandalized within days of each other, and it's something that is frustrating for both city officials and park goers. Arlena Howder has the story. Laurel's being hit with a vandalism spree. A sticker swastika was found here in the bathroom at Kiwanis Park over the weekend. And just this Tuesday morning, a hole was found cut into the slide at Thompson Park. <laughs> Laurel resident Amy Unruh and her son Oscar love to visit Kiwanis Park. Woo! Kids Kingdom is a great park. They've just put in a bunch of new attractions and it's a lot of fun for my boys. But over the weekend, some unsavory guests paid a visit to the park as well. I wasn't very surprised because I had noticed some vandalism, just garbage vandalism before, but um, it makes me sad. Laurel Police Department was called to the park Sunday morning to find this. A trashed restroom, phallic imagery on the walls, and a stickered on swastika. Isolated in the sense that I don't think that there's a large threat of that type of symbolism or ideal. Obviously, it's in every area and community. Um, but it's it's shocking to us because that doesn't represent us. The restroom has been cleaned up since and the investigation is ongoing. We do believe they are juveniles and so there's a little sensitivity with what you can put out there. But it's not the end of Laurel's vandalism woes. A hole was found in the slide at Thompson Park. Kind of strange. I've never seen somebody cut holes into things. Laurel Public Works Director Matt Wheeler says the vandalism is more than just a reoccurring nuisance. What it does is, it, yeah, we clean them up, but it takes away from the stuff that we would like to be doing. It's uh, fixing all this, but it's pointless. It's why Chief of Police Stan Langvey has been looking into new surveillance technology for the city. Ironically enough, I just received the demo equipment uh, last week and so hoping to get that implemented. Unruh hopes it's the last she'll see of it for her son's sake. Those bathrooms are very well used by little boys that have to go to the bathroom a lot, so it'd be a shame if they had to be locked up or anything. In Laurel, Alina Howder, MTN News. The former leader of the extremist group known as the Proud Boys has been sentenced to more than two decades in prison. 
The 22 year sentence for Enrique Tario is actually less than the 33 years that the DOJ recommended. Tario was convicted of multiple charges, including seditious conspiracy for his part in the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. Now, Tario wasn't actually in D.C. because of a prior arrest that had banned him from traveling there. The prosecutor said he organized and led the attack from a hotel room in nearby Baltimore. Three other members of the group were sentenced for their part last week. COVID-19 cases are spiking again, not only across the nation, but also here in Billings. Last month alone, Billings Clinic treated 20 patients and a 68-year-old infected with the virus died. Tonight, Q2's Phil Van Pelt dives deeper into the numbers. COVID hospitalization rates have quadrupled right here at Billings Clinic from July to August. And with a new vaccine on the horizon in September, there's expectations that vaccination rates will continue to climb as well. I have a passionate stance for protecting my child. Colette Hahn knows any illness for 10-year-old Brooklyn can be life-changing. Brooklyn suffers from asthma and other health conditions. So Hahn said the decision to vaccinate her from COVID-19 was a no-brainer. As soon as those shots came out for kids, we put her we put her right in line. Brooklyn has never been diagnosed with COVID, despite being exposed multiple times in school. That journey started for us in early 2020 as it did for everybody. Many believe three years later, that journey is over, but numbers at Billings Clinic say otherwise. For the month of July, we had five hospitalizations. That age range um, was in the low 30s into the 90s. Um, no deaths were reported. The month of August, that changed for us. In August, hospitalizations rose to 20 with one death, a 68-year-old. Those stats don't include kids, but in a 24-hour period last week, the clinic saw eight positive pediatric COVID cases. Previously, they'd see one to two total cases a month, with some months having zero. These viruses are going to circulate. Um, around humans who congregate and gather. With school now back in session comes a new COVID vaccine expected to be available in mid-September. We certainly recommend vaccination. We have seen vaccination save lives and um, we still are going to be strong advocates of vaccine. The vaccine is expected to be a single dose with boosters available during respiratory infection seasons. You can expect Brooklyn to be one of the first in line. It doesn't handle every symptom for every virus. We understand that. But what it does do, again, it is going to, they do their best to put what's in that shot to handle what's going on. In Billings, Phil Van Peltz, MTN News. Well, still ahead on the MTN 10 o'clock news here on Q2, give a child a book. We'll dive into the importance of literacy and how you can impact a child's life next. And in sports, saying goodbye to a legend. We'll take a look back at the life of Larry Prettyweasel. The MTN 10 o'clock news continues right after this.